Think about this. Why haven't fountain pens gone extinct? They've been around for over 100 years and are still widely available despite the inventions of the ballpoint pen, the typewriter, the computer, and the mobile phone. One of the most important reasons and the subject of this video is that fountain pens are immensely satisfying to use. To illustrate this point, I picked five pens as the most satisfying in terms of visual and tactile appeal. Now, what might be satisfying to some may be an annoyance to others. So take this list with a grain or two of salt. I didn't put these pens in any particular order, but I did save one pen for last that isn't as well known as the others. First up, we have the Pilot Vanishing Point, and this is the Red Coral, which is the limited edition of 2022. The Pilot Vanishing Point combines convenience of a click top ballpoint with the writing performance of a fountain pen, namely, it's 18 karat gold nib. The design of the pen is very satisfying in that it's a streamlined shape. It's very simple, but to the point convenient because it's a quick draw pen. It's meant to go from your pocket. It's meant to go from your pocket to being able to write with it in just a matter of a second or two. Unlike other fountain pens, and fountain pens of the past where you've had to remove a cap and then worry about where a cap's going, this pen is able to quickly deploy and write whenever you need to. One of the aspects that I really enjoy about this is being able to see the fountain pen nib come out of the trap door in the very front part of the grip section that's here. So you could kind of just play around with it and just see the nib kind of slide its way on out, kind of like a snake's tongue and kind of just pierces out there and then comes back in. And it's a very, very satisfying click on this pen. And another aspect of it, of course, is because it's spring loaded, is that the whole entire nib unit comes out and it's also spring loaded when you come back in here. So it kind of has that little bouncy feeling that's here. And when that notch falls right through, it's like you can't put this nib in the wrong way. This little metal part that's here on the nib unit has to go right into that notch. It's kind of satisfying to put that all together. And then also too, is just closing it as nice and tight as it is. It just comes together in such a nice uniform streamlined appeal here. And most styles like this red coral are lacquered over brass. So the pen itself has a decent amount of weight to it because it's not made of plastic, it's made of brass with the lacquer coating. And then also some editions like previous limited editions also had some interesting designs like the black links or the guilloche pattern that also provided extra texture, which is satisfying to the fingertips. And all of them, despite whatever style that you get, include an 18 karat gold nib, which in its own right is a very, very nice, smooth, well-performing nib. It's probably one of the most, I would say, economical of gold nibs, being that most vanishing points can still be found under $200, but yet still contain an 18 karat gold nib. And you would get that same writing performance that you would expect out of an 18 karat gold pilot nib. It's going to be smooth. If you want really nice buttery smoothness, I would opt for medium or broad. If you want that nice, fine line, then definitely extra fine or fine is good. It still will give you a decent amount of ink flow, but it will control that line and make it very nice and tight. So for a quick draw fountain pen, the Pilot Vanishing Point satisfies on the go writers and professionals. For a pen that's over 50 years old, the Lamy 2000 looks pretty good, doesn't it? So this is my Lamy 2000 in the Bauhaus Blue of course, I have to flex and show this pen on this video because it's mine and I want to show you guys that I practice what I preach here. If I'm saying that this is the most satisfying or one of the most satisfying pens, I should be using it, right? And there's a lot of great reasons why I love this pen, one of which is on first appearance, it's its Bauhaus design. It's very minimalistic. There's not a lot of adornment here. There's not even a lot of differentiation in where the different parts of the pen are, especially looking at it capped. Uh, the blind cap is even kind of hidden from view when you don't have it engaged here. It's, it's a very, very like super futuristic, modernist sort of design, but yet 
was invented and released the same way over 50 years ago. So it has a certain timeless quality that it just refuses to get gussied up with any extra accoutrement that you know, try to make it more fancier. It's just perfect the way that it is. And you could get this version regularly in standard black and not pay a fortune for it, which I did. So in, to just have it in blue. Really the, the main calling card of the 2000, besides of course it's space age look, is it's smooth fiberglass reinforced Macrolon material. It has a warm, inviting feel when you hold it in your hand. With also the, the kind of the shape of it, the, this very gentle curving shape, the material just, it just feels so great to be able to hold this in your hand. Uh, and I wish that I could give this to you to hold it in your hand to give you that impression, but I'm trying to describe it as best as I possibly could. Uh, one of the great aspects of this pen also for people who don't like sharp step downs from the barrel to the section is that it has no step down. It, the barrel seamlessly transitions into the front grip section of which this is stainless steel up top here and it's brushed stainless steel too so it gives you a little bit of extra grip at that very forward end. And at the very very tip of it, the business end, you have a hooded gold nib. And when you're holding this pen, I mean, yeah, there are that little, these little nubs that are on the side here, these little metal catch nubs, but we'll get to what the point is for those. Um, it, to me, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, for some people, it may be kind of an issue because they don't want that little annoyance there, especially with everything else being so incredibly smooth. Um, but that has a purpose and that has to do with the cap. So one of the great satisfying aspects of this pen is putting the cap back on the barrel and then pushing it and then that, that very end when you know it's fully capped it has that little metal tink, like that little catch of those tabs going right into the spots that they're supposed to so uh, you know that it's securely on there that your nib is going to stay fresh and ready to go for the next time that you write. Another nice feature of this cap is the clip. It's spring-loaded and hinged at the top. So all you have to do is, as you're putting the pen in your pocket, you could press down, it lifts up the clip, then you attach it to your pocket. It's on there nice and securely because it's got the spring-loaded mechanism in there. At the forward end here, the advantage of a hooded nib is that you have the section where you would suck the ink up is at the very, very tip of the nib. So with most nibs, you'd have a, the larger size nibs especially, you'd have to dip the nib all the way up to where the nib meets with the section. With this, since the nib is so small, you would just, you could basically get right down to the end of a bottle of ink or an ink sample and suck up the very last of it. And that being able to finish every little last bit of drop of ink is very satisfying. And the writing experience on this is also just as satisfying. With the super smooth 14 karat gold nib, it writes with a thicker than usual line when you're used to, let's say, Yovo or Bach nibs. It's going to give you a, a thicker line, so a, a medium Lamy 2000 nib will probably be equivalent to a European broad nib, I would say. And that's fairly consistent across the board too. So an extra fine would write more like a fine Yovo nib in terms of line width. The smoothness though is really, really nice. And it does have like a little bit, I would say more of a sweet spot. So you do have to be somewhat like aware of how you're holding the pen. When you get to that sweet spot and you're writing in it, it is just beautifully, beautifully smooth. Because the 2000 checks so many satisfying boxes, this pen will be around for many, many more years to come. Considered by many to be the pinnacle of any pen collection, the Homo Sapiens is the flagship model of the Visconti brand. Now, I have here the Lotus Garden, which is an acrylic fountain pen, it's a limited edition. However, the original Homo Sapiens is also to be considered on this satisfying list because it was made of basaltic lava, which has its own characteristics in that it is hygroscopic, I believe the term is, where it absorbs some hand sweat. It's a porous material, so it has its own sort of flavor in holding it. However, I picked the acrylic version because I wanted to show you one of its most satisfying characteristics that you wouldn't be able to see in the basaltic lava version. But first we'll take a look at the hook safe lock capping mechanism. So this mechanism only, you only need to just press it and turn it 
a fraction of the way, not even turning it around multiple times, not even a quarter. It's just like, it's like an eighth of a turn. You press down and you can lift up. And so it's really quick. It's, it's not necessarily as quick or convenient as the vanishing point, but it is a very quick capping mechanism that's on here. And then also too, is that has an inner cap sleeve that presses upon it with the spring loaded mechanism to then make sure that keep your nib fresh in between riding sessions. Love it or hate it, I know some people don't like it, but the Visconti Arc Clip is also one of the satisfying aspects of this pen. Because of its spring loaded capability, it's a very, very secure type of clip. I also think it's very satisfying because it, it calls to mind its Italian heritage and the, the bridge that goes over the Ponte Vecchio. And it has, of course, the ostentatious branding of Visconti on here. Um, so that could be a little bit much for some, but I think it's a very well-built clip. It's very sturdy. I think you're going to feel secure in clipping it to anything, uh, shirt pockets or pen loops. And it also, I feel, gives the pen its distinctive Viscontiness. So the one aspect that I want to show you with this involves its filling mechanism, which is unique to the pens that we're gonna be talking about here, which is the vacuum filling power mechanism. So I have here an ink that I used recently for a TikTok slash YouTube short slash you know, short video. This uh, mechanism works like, let's say, a Pilot Custom 823 or the Novelor Original Plus, uh, where it works as a one-handed vacuum filling system. First, what I did was I unscrewed the blind cap from the rest of the barrel that I'm going to pull up. And then you could see on the inside here, because the acrylic is thin in the barrel, whereas it's completely opaque in the cap, so you actually can see the ink level and the stuff that's going on in here. And that's a very satisfying characteristic I think people enjoy of fountain pens as well, is that you can see the ink within your pen sloshing around, especially with something that has a high capacity filling system like this Visconti. So then we're going to just use one hand to operate the vacuum filling system. We're going to push down on the plunger. And the ink is now in the barrel get some of the excess ink that's off of here. Uh, you might be able to see in the light here, if I turn the barrel, the ink then goes sloshing around on the inside. And I picked a purple ink because it kind of goes nicely with the purple uh, swirls in this lotus garden that's here. You're writing with fountain pen ink, which is highly unusual these days because most people just have disposable ballpoint pens or no pens at all. So. When you're wielding a fountain pen and you see somebody with it, and it happens to have a whole bunch of ink that kind of jostles and, and, and splashes around as somebody's using it or, or you know, turning the pen like this, it's a kind of like a fidget worthy slash satisfying aspect of using this fountain pen. And then also too is that you don't have to worry about unsightly ink burping or possible leakages because there is a safety mechanism that's inside of uh, the pen here so that when I have it completely closed like this, the pen does not have access to the rest of the ink in the barrel, which means that if there's any sort of pressure changes or temperature changes that happen to the air that's inside of this barrel, it's not going to force the rest of the ink out. It'll just stay in there. But if you want to let more ink into the pen, all you have to do is just release the safety mechanism by unscrewing the blind cap free from the rest of the body. And of course, when you're writing with the Visconti Homo Sapiens, you have an 18 karat gold nib. I know they used to make them in 21 karat palladium, but now they're 18 karat gold, which is very, very satisfying in itself. It's very smooth. Uh, they come in a standard nib size range, extra fine through broad plus a stub, and with the medium broad and stub being the smoothest of the bunch. So that is why the Visconti Homo Sapiens is a very satisfying fountain pen. Similar to its German counterpart in the Lamy 2000, the Diplomat Aero has a simplified streamlined profile, smooth anodized aluminum body with grooves that run up the length of the pen like a fluted column of classical art architecture. Despite a solid metal construction, the aluminum body feels lightweight and balanced, even with putting the cap on the back of the barrel. And as with the Lamy 2000, one of the more satisfying aspects of the Diplomat Aero is the capping. So this is a snap cap that at the very end, as you're pushing it, you're getting some tension. 
has that metal snap at the end and then everything becomes completely streamlined all the way. No lip or anything like that. It is completely streamlined from bottom to top. So it's a very, very rewarding experience. Um, also, since everything is made out of metal, it kind of has this over-engineered or, or that it's just engineered to exceptional tolerances where you could do something like this. You, when you're filling the pen, you could take the barrel and then twist it really fast to remove it off of the threads in the section. Same thing in reverse. And also too is that you hear like kind of the metal tinkling it just tells you that you have something that's a lot different than just having a, a resin or acrylic pen. It just has that, has that me full metal feel, but without that really heavy feeling to the pen. Um, so it kind of has the best of both worlds. It feels like a more significant pen because of its metal construction and its weight, but yet at the same time, it's not overly too heavy where you feel like your hands being dragged around by this pen that you're working out as you're writing at the same time. Uh, and then also, even though this is a Yovo nib, the Yovo stainless steel and golden options are, I don't know what Diplomat does, but they do all the little things that they are supposed to do right. And that's with also with the Yovo nib. The Yovo nib is like, is exceptionally smooth and uh, I would say smoother than most other standard pens that come with Yovo nibs. Uh, so number six size, it's available in either 14 karat gold or stainless steel. I would say for the, what the money is for, for the cost is that the stainless steel is, is just as good. Like you could definitely pick up the stainless steel and be completely satisfied with the amount of smoothness and performance that you would get out of this nib. So Diplomat does all of the little things right to make this Diplomat Arrow an extremely rewarding writing experience. All right, last but not least, we have the Kielk Camera Laterna. This is a pen that you may have not seen in any other video so far. I've not seen in many collections that people share online, but it is definitely one of the most unique, satisfying pens that we have on the website. First of all, on first appearance, it is a stunning chatoyant mother of pearl gray acrylic that it looks a lot like celluloid, but it's not celluloid. It has that deep sort of chatoyance that's on here that you would see with, sh with celluloid, but it's not completely 100% like that celluloid look. But it gives you just enough to give the impression of celluloid film, which is what the theme of the pen is. It's all about the silver screen, film noir. You see the, all the other hallmark elements that kind of bring this theme together. And that's the, uh, the leader line barrel that's over here. So it has the, the leader, which is five, four, three, two, one. And then it has the symbol for 925, which is this aged sterling silver, which I think looks great with the mother of pearl gray resin. Uh, it, has a, it has a unique shape, which I'll get to in just a second. It's, it's not completely cylindrical, but it does have this kind of this bottleneck uh, grip section that's here uh, that gives it a little distinct flair, almost like a Leonardo Momento Zero kind of look. Uh, and then the cap itself is a, is a complete cylinder here. And then you've got the clip, which is also made out of aged uh, 925 sterling silver, is it looks like a piece of film. So it kind of has this look like it's supposed to be a flimsy piece of celluloid film, but it's a solid sterling silver clip. So it's, it's really an interesting play on what uh, they're trying to interpret here, but putting it into something that's very solid and part of this pen design. And what's also a little bit on the more unique side about this pen, about the Kilk brand in general, is that they use Bach nibs. And Bach for, has kind of got a bad rap, I would say, over the last, let's say, five, six years or so, is that they're, they're rather inconsistent in their quality control of nibs. And uh, Leonardo, for one, was, was a brand that started out using Bach nibs, and then they went to Yovo, because they wanted to streamline the consistency and smoothness of the nibs. Uh, but Kilk has stayed with Bach. Bachs are good when they're checked for their quality. And that's what Kilk does is before any of the pens leave the factory, they will check through and just make sure that these are writing good, that they're not having any issues with baby's bottom or misaligned tines and things. So it's that little extra finishing touch that 
you know, gives this pen an extra level of, of, of writing excellence. And uh, Bach nibs are great on their own. They're, they're a little bit more bouncier than Yovo nibs. Um, I feel that they're also smoother than Yovo nibs uh, throughout the, their whole range, extra fine through broad. And, uh, and it's, so it's a little bit more of a unique experience being that most pens usually use either Schmidt or Yovo nibs. And I'm kind of holding the most key elements of this pen to last because I think they're amazing and I want to kind of slow roll this a little bit. The cap is a great fit for the bottom of the barrel. It's a vacuum fit. So it, it kind of fits on so smoothly without feeling like you're doing any damage to the back of the pen. It's not clutching to the back of the pen. It's, it's a vacuum fit. So like as I'm doing this here, it, it does come off eventually if you kind of if you shake vigorous enough, but it's it's a such a smooth entrance onto the back end of that pen that as you're writing with it, it's not wiggling off. It's not coming off. It's on there very nicely, but it's not it's not really doing any sort of harm to the back of the pen where it's trying to attach itself to forcefully. On top of that, the last part to top it all off is this finial that's here. It is a spinning reel finial that is perfect for fidgeting. It's a brilliant finishing touch on this design to bring the whole concept together. Silver screen, old classic movies, and I mean, who does that? I mean, besides, of course, let's say Monte Grappa and they'll charge you like $3,000 for this sort of type of thing. It's made out of sterling silver as well, and I mean, I could play with this all day long. I mean, that, that to me is just extremely satisfying. And also to, on top of that, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound cheap. It has that kind of that ringing of metal on metal as you're, as you're spinning it. So it doesn't sound like a fidget spinner is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it, it, this sounds like it's a, it's a fine writing instrument that you could also kind of have a little bit of fun and tinker with as you're, as you're using the pen. It's like one of those unexpected surprises that you wouldn't think by looking at a picture of it on the website would just be such a satisfying, fun pen to use, but Kill Camo Laterna, there you go. One of the most satisfying pens that we have on goldspot.com. To recap, we looked at pens with an excellent look, feel, and writing performance. The Pilot Vanishing Point with its quick, convenient, retractable nib, the Lamy 2000 for its timeless form follows function design. The Visconti Homo Sapiens redefines luxury fountain pens with its vacuum fill system, capping mechanism, and iconic clip. The Diplomat Aero for its lightweight full metal construction and smooth curves. Last but not least, the Kilt Camera Laterna executes its theme of the silver screen with grace and exquisite detail. If you're looking for a supremely satisfying pen, please use the links in the description below to shop at goldspot.com. As always, we appreciate your support of our family-owned business. Even if you're not in the market for a pen right now, sign up for the email newsletters so you can get updates on all the newest writing instruments from around the world. Keep on watching satisfying writing videos by checking out our full review on the Diplomat Aero here. Or you can see my ode to the Lamy 2000 in this video here. Subscribe to the Goldspot Pens channel to keep in touch about all the latest and greatest in fine writing. Thank you for watching and stay inky, my friends. Take care.